Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today we are doing a news video not for Payday 3 but for Baldur's Gate 3, the game that's become my favourite game ever made and I said I'd make more videos on it and some news just dropped on their Steam page talking about the next big patch, Patch 7, as well as some other content coming down the line and I thought it'd be a really cool idea to go through this in a Payday 3 news style fashion and just talk about my thoughts on this post they've put up. If you are new to the channel and you've not seen me before, I'm usually known for Payday stuff but I'm spreading my wings a little bit since Payday 3 ain't been doing so hot since launch so if you do enjoy this video and you'd like to see me talk about any other games or any Baldur's Gate 3 specific stuff, leave a comment down below, let me know and subscribe if you're new because I'm going to be trying to spread out and do other gaming stuff, not just Payday 3 going forward. However, let's have a little look through this update, shall we? So this is update number 26. They're talking about evil endings coming to the game and also moving on as a studio from Baldur's Gate 3 because there's been a few bits of news that have come out since. So for one thing, they talk first off about Baldur's Gate 3 getting five BAFTAs and winning Game of the Year at the BAFTA Awards. And I think it's just quite cool to note that they did say that Baldur's Gate 3 is the first game in history to win Game of the Year at every major awards show, that being the BAFTAs, and then Golden Joysticks, Game Developers Choice, DICE, and The Game Awards. So a very cool feat for them and well-deserved. But they have got some stuff to talk about beyond that. I love that picture of the Baldur's BAFTAs as well. That's a great photo. What is next to Baldur's Gate 3? I will scroll up ever so slightly because that gif is slightly spoilery and I should explain if you haven't finished the game, you may want to come back to this later because there are a few gifts that are slightly spoilery. Not too much, but if you want to stay completely fresh, then do avoid it. But they still have a few tricks up their sleeve for patch 7 of Baldur's Gate 3 and beyond. They're working on the next game update, patch 7, which will add improved evil endings to the game for even darker conclusions to the most sinister playthroughs. And yes, that even includes the non-dark urge players. Without giving too much away, here's a little teaser for what's to come, but be warned, there may be spoilers. So first gif here, some kind of uh, mind blast happening in Baldur's Gate. I mean, it's the tiniest bit. I'm expecting there'll be a lot more to it than that. I do think it's interesting they've used the Dark Urge base model for both of these gifts, she'll say. That might be the non-Dark Urge ending, or they both might both be Dirge. I don't know. But the other one, this one, is like something out of Infinity War or something. The art style here is cool as hell. I love it. I really like that. I like the captions underneath as well. Got him. And what's the best way to get bloodstains out? But these new cinematic cutscenes have also been given the musical treatment by our very own BAFTA award winning composer, Borislav Slavov. He said the dark endings usually make the music colours go dark too. So here's a snippet of music from one of the upcoming new end scenes that has been posted on Larian's official channel. I will link that in the description. I'm not going to play music now in this video, but it is the typical masterpiece you expect from Bobby. He's a really good guy. And honestly, the best part of the BAFTAs was him getting the music award. He deserved it thoroughly. The musical Baldur's Gate 3 is just insane. But they do talk about a few more bits than that. Patch 7 also aims to fix several bugs you've reported. They list a couple of examples. But they then say it will also begin introducing the official modding tools, letting you change up visuals, animations, sounds, stats, and more to overhaul Baldur's Gate 3 into the weird nightmare realm of your dreams. Now, if you haven't heard this news recently, they did announce that modding is coming to all platforms for Baldur's Gate 3, not just PC, but also consoles. And they have specified consoles a few times on Twitter, on their forums. It's going to be one of the only game developers or one of the only games I could say it could be even more specific that allow full supported console mods. The only ones I can think off the top of my head that do it beyond this are Skyrim and Fallout 4, both of which are Bethesda games. So Larian, I think, is the second studio, or at least second big studio to do this. If I'm wrong and I've missed one, please do correct me. But it is really cool to see. It takes a lot of effort, so I understand why companies don't tend to do it. But when they do it, it really makes the game a lot better. And with Baldur's Gate 3, the idea of actually getting to throw mods in here, I might not even be that experimental, but just adding new customization options, new outfits, I I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited for that. But beyond patch seven, they will continue focusing on bug fixes, performance enhancements, stability improvements, and overall ensuring that the best possible gaming experience is being had by everyone playing the game. But they have confirmed they are working on bringing crossplay and a photo mode to Baldur's Gate 3. I didn't even know crossplay was in the works, unless that's a new announcement, but I had heard rumors of a photo mode months ago, but both are still coming, but the work required to bring these to you means that the additions will be likely further down the road, so patch 8 or patch 9, or maybe just in its own little hotfix, but I imagine it'd be within its own actual numbered patch. Those are big features. The hotfixes are only bug fixes, so maybe patch 8 is a decent prediction for that. But they then also confirmed they're going to be introducing additional internal playtesting ahead of release to support the regular QA process, and with patch 7 being packed full of bug fixes and new features they've yet to go to detail on, there will also be a closed beta on PC where a select number of players worldwide will be given an opportunity to test the latest update, which they'll talk about more in the coming weeks. So that already puts a bit of a timeline on the update. It means that we're not going to see this patch until May at the earliest, but I mean, that's the coming weeks, so you probably won't be able to get early access till May. So maybe late May, June seems like a good bet for when the patch will come out. Who knows? We'll see. But I like the idea of internal testing. I know that Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3 got a lot more stick from people because it had a lot more bugs in instability because it didn't go through several years of early access. So I'm excited to see that they're going to be testing it and making it more refined before that comes out. That's a really good, good idea. And I think more game studios could benefit from that. 
Anyone who watches my channel know who I'm talking about there. But either way, looking to the future, they then talk a little bit more about the game as a whole and what they're going to do next. I don't need to read all of this, but they did confirm, or Sven Vinky, the uh, director of Larian Studios, confirmed they're not making DLC or expansions for Baldur's Gate 3, and they're also not making Baldur's Gate 4. Despite some hints that expansions were coming down the line, they actually turned around on them. Apparently, they came back after a Christmas break and realised their heart wasn't in it and just said, you know what, let's just do something new. So they've seized the opportunity to develop their own IPs, and they're working on two new projects. It stands to reason that one of them is probably Divinity Original Sin 3. It's a franchise I really need to get into now, having played Baldur's Gate, and then maybe the other one is something new altogether. They will tell us more about it down the line, but they will bring all the sensibilities from Baldur's Gate 3 into whatever they make next, which is great. And to finish off, I think a nice comment from Sven again is a really cool way to wrap up this blog. I don't know if we're going to pull it off, but looking at our narrative, visual, and gameplay plans, I think that what we're working on now will be our best work ever. I get excited like a kid watching the key imagery, and I want to show it to everyone now and grumble in frustration at having to wait until it's all actually working. Yes, it is hype, but it's hype because it looks and feels good. And not to make the, the comparisons, but man, it's nice to just see a fully good blog from a game that all sounds good, there's no problems, no nothing, and I'm so excited for the evil endings. I literally just finished a dirge run the other night where I was going to do full dark ending and then still weaned away from it because I knew this was coming and I think it may be better to embrace the full evil thing once the new endings have come out. I'll probably watch them all on YouTube when they drop anyway, but I'm still really excited to actually maybe play through and get a couple of them and see what else they got cooking. Because they've said there's other stuff in patch seven. I mean, where was the wording there towards the end? Yeah, being patched full of bulk bug fixes and new features they've yet to go into detail on. So there's more to this than just the evil endings, which is really cool. Because I mean, realistically, the evil endings in and of itself would be enough. And on top of that, the, the official modding tools getting kicked off. I don't know, by the way, if the modding tools are coming to all platforms in their first patch, because they said it's the, them introducing it. So it might be that they launch it on PC and then when it's finally finished and ready to go, they release it on PC and also consoles as the finished version. I wouldn't really blame them for putting it on PC first, getting it right on one platform and then spreading it to others. But who knows? I think there's some really good stuff cooking here and I'm excited to see what Patch 7's got. So thank you all very much for watching this news video on Baldur's Gate 3, looking at the community update number 26. If you want to see more Baldur's Gate Three videos let me know. I did a video a few weeks ago or a month or two ago now exploring some cut content from Baldur's Gate 3. I have still got several more points that I'd like to talk about and it's even more apt now that we know they're probably not going to follow up on any of them. So I could do that too but also I have a video essay I've been writing for a little bit that I want to put out on this and some general other vibes. So if there's anything else you want to see from this game or any other games please do leave them in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. I want to try and mix things up and in my head I've kind of decided that I'm going to try and shoot for two videos a week. The Payday Dev Blog every Friday and then something else ideally earlier in the week but this one came out on a Thursday so we move with it but yeah thank you all for watching greatly appreciate it if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up to let me know you've enjoyed it and also click the subscribe button if you're new around here to stay in touch with anything that I talk about be it about payday Baldur's Gate 3 or anything else I decide to chat about I really appreciate you all hanging out and I'll see you all very soon in the new video undoubtedly tomorrow for the next payday dev blog so thank you all for listening and watching and I'll see you all soon take it easy